In 2018, the governor signed Executive Order 24 to infuse trauma-informed care throughout the entire state service. We took that work on in particular within the Delaware State Police within our Victim Service Advocacy Group. And by their description, certainly, it made them more responsive uh, to, to victims. They often are charged, well, they are always charged with uh, making some of the most tragic notifications that can be made to families who have lost a, a loved one unexpectedly and providing them with services to restore, you know, safety and security. But this Trauma-informed care really made that journey a longer walk. They stayed more engaged with victims um, as maybe there was trial prep that had to be done, um, work to restore the security within their own homes, and a wide array of things. They describe it as just infusing more compassion into their work and coming from a position of being non-judgmental. Being trauma-informed allows you to look at the totality of that family, uh, maybe of that community. Right? Some, some things happen within a given community and you're able to be more responsive to the connectivity that exists in that community and respond in different ways, but in ways that are meaningful to those people. And really, they, they gave great examples of staying with that family or that given community on a journey, um, sometimes upwards of years in, in ways that, you know, maybe in previously there would have been a soft handoff to to some level of support and service, but now they themselves stay engaged with those, those individuals. And the totality of the work that, that they do as victims advocates also can take a very demanding toll on them emotionally. So when they first uh, took this training on and started to infuse it into their work, they said, let's sit around and talk about our own wellness, our own resiliency. And that was one of the very first things she encouraged when you when you bring this training into your own unit that you that you have that piece of self reflection, uh, maybe individually and then certainly as a group, and then look at the totality of your work and find those areas where you can infuse trauma informed care and make those longer term relationships and walk victims back to a period of safety and security. What they have done as a trauma informed care group and infusing that work has led many of those efforts I discussed with, you know, putting our arms around all that we're doing for our own wellness. And then how can we do that better? And uh, that led to a lot of great conversations among us to, to discover, let's stand up a wellness unit. Let's start having the conversations they're having out in the community with, with victims of trauma. Let's start having those conversations ourselves about each other and the work that we see. How is it affecting our family life? How is it affecting us because we don't want to carry that well into retirement? So I think it helped us then spearhead a lot of those efforts that I describe in terms of a wellness app and a greater volume of resources, adding more chaplains to our chaplain core, just any way that we can be more thoughtful about caring for and about our workforce um, will undoubtedly make us better. And then in turn, we serve the state better.